Here's an adult boreal toad found at Triangle Pass up here near Gothic, Colorado. These are a state endangered species and have been petitioned for federal listing. Um, so it's pretty cool that we are able to find some of these still in the southwest region. We don't have a ton left, but this is one of the strongholds and uh, today we've seen pretty much all life stages. We stocked out some tadpoles that are ready to metamorph and we also saw some younger ones as well as some uh, year old toadlets. So kind of seeing all size classes indicative of a pretty healthy population up here and we're gonna try to keep that going. That was Dan Kamek, the Southwest Aquatic Native Species Biologist. This field season, Dan Kamek and the Colorado Parks and Wildlife Southwest Aquatic Native Species crew spent a lot of time working with boreal toads. Boreal toads are unique species. They are typically found from 8 to 12,000 feet in wet, montane habitats. They are greenish gray to brown in color and have dark blotching on their abdomens and backs. Adult males and females have a thin white streak running lengthwise down their backs. The toads are highly camouflaged and often won't move until nearly stepped on, so consider yourself lucky if you find one. Currently, boreal toads are a state endangered species. Chytrid fungus, which is negatively affecting amphibians worldwide, is the leading cause of declines in boreal toad populations. This video is meant to document the conservation efforts that Colorado Parks and Wildlife, along with several other partners, put forth to attempt to recover the species in the southwest region of Colorado. The goal for the crew this year was to collect 10,000 eggs from known breeding sites in the southwest region. The eggs are transported to the Native Species Restoration Facility in Alamosa where they are raised to late stage tadpoles. The tadpoles are then restocked at several other locations throughout southwest Colorado in order to reestablish the toads and hope to create new breeding populations. As anyone living in the mountains of Colorado during the 2018-2019 winter knows, it was a great snow year. Heavy snowfall accumulated over the winter and continued to fall into the late spring. Typically, by early June, the alpine ponds where boreal toads breed are beginning to melt out. The toads will start to look for breeding opportunities as soon as the snow and ice melt off the breeding ponds, so it is important that the ponds are monitored frequently in the spring in order to have the greatest chance of finding the toads while they are breeding. Because of the heavy snowfall, crew members had to utilize backcountry ski gear when trying to locate the breeding toads this spring. Finding the toads when they are breeding is crucial because it ensures that crew members can find and collect fresh and healthy toad eggs to bring to the Native Species Restoration Facility. The 2018-2019 winter brought wet, heavy snow that caused massive and frequent avalanches across the state. The two main breeding pods in the southwest region are Triangle Pass and Magdalene Gulch. Due to the heavy snowfall, the pond stayed under snow about three to four weeks longer than normal. The Triangle Pass breeding site happens to be directly in an avalanche path. A large avalanche was carried down the avalanche path and buried the breeding ponds in snow and avalanche debris. When monitoring breeding sites, any toads that are found are captured and swabbed with a cotton swab in order to find out if chytrid fungus is found at the site. The cotton swabs are sent to a lab that can identify that if the fungus is present on the skin of the toads. It is important to monitor the spread of the fungus to help make better informed conservation decisions. Triangle Pass is the last known chytrid fungus negative site in the southwest region of Colorado. Magdalene Gulch unfortunately tested positive for chytrid fungus several years ago. After several weeks of monitoring breeding sites and swabbing toads found near the breeding ponds, the toads finally began to make their way across the snow and into the ponds in the middle of July. Due to the late snow melt, toads were eager to breed quickly. The Triangle Pass breeding site was full of breeding pairs that were latched together in what is known as amplexus. Over 16 pairs were found in amplexus at the Triangle Pass breeding site. It was a common sight to see several males fight over a single female. Unfortunately, breeding pairs were never found at the Magdalene Gulch breeding site. Eggs were discovered at the site, however they were all dead, which is thought to be due to a lack of male contribution. The toad crew believes this was the case because multiple females were discovered directly next to the ponds, yet no males were found. Luckily, Triangle Pass turned out to be highly productive. Over 10 individual egg masses were found, and there were still several pairs found in Amplexus. Eggs were gathered from each egg mass found at Triangle Pass and brought to the Native Species Restoration Facility. The skilled staff at the Native Species Hatchery did a great job of raising the toads at every stage, from the egg, to the tadpole, to the toadlet. While the toads were being raised in the Native Species Hatchery, the toad crew began to make the final preparations at the Cliff Creek Ponds. Water levels in the ponds were altered so that they would be the perfect level for late-stage tadpoles and toadlets that would be arriving in just a few days. 
Here, a crew member is removing boards that enable the water level to be either lowered or raised in the engineered ponds. The tadpoles and toadlets were counted and removed from their rearing tanks. They were then placed into buckets and transferred into hatchery trucks to be driven to their new homes. The first site where tadpoles and toadlets were stocked was at the Cliff Creek Ponds. In the following video, Dan explains the importance of this site and what makes it unique. We're out here at the Cliff Creek Ponds, kind of near Creed, Colorado today, and we're releasing some boreal toad tadpoles um, in, in these ponds that you can see here. They were actually built last summer, um, and it's been a collaboration between CPW and the Forest Service, as well as uh, Partners for Wildlife, uh, Fish and Wildlife Service program. And uh, definitely this project um, was the brainchild of uh, Paul Jones, my predecessor um, at CPW. So this is a pretty significant day that we're actually releasing these tadpoles. As you can see in the area, this area did burn um, in the West Fork Complex fire back in 2013. And uh, one of the big reasons for this project is to see if uh, chytrid fungus prevalence is, is less in these burned areas, which some research suggests. So we did burn, or we did build these ponds, and uh, we'll be releasing right around 2,700 tadpoles and about 60 toadlets today. These tadpoles are approximately at a Gosner 40 stage, which means they have their hind legs growing out, and they're just on the cusp of metamorphing into toads. The next site where the tadpoles were relocated was at Humphreys Ranch near Creed. Humphreys Ranch is a privately owned ranch with very generous and conservation minded owners. The owners, along with the owner's extended family and friends, were extremely excited to have the tadpoles and toadlets stocked on the property. They helped with transporting bags of tadpoles to the ponds that were also built specifically to house toads and tadpoles. Colorado Parks and Wildlife is very thankful for the opportunity to implement conservation measures for these toads on this private property. Hopefully more opportunities to work on conservation projects on private properties will be possible in the future. The next translocation site was at the Brittle Silver Ponds. The road to the ponds was too rough for a hatchery truck, so toads had to be loaded into a cooler on the back of a razor and brought to the site. We're out here in the Brittle Silver Basin, Quartz Creek drainage, kind of near Pitkin, Colorado today, and we're releasing about 5,000 boreal toad tadpoles. This is the second year of the project, and uh, we've actually seen a lot of the toads that we released last year, so we're getting some good survival. Here's a look at some of our tadpoles that we just released swimming around. Here's a look at a yearling toad I just found right next door. Looking good. As Dan explained, this was the second year in a row stocking at this site. 5,000 tadpoles were stocked the previous year, and when crew members returned to the site to stock the tadpoles, hundreds of year-old toads were found around the ponds where the tadpoles were being stocked. Here you can see a year-old toad next to a toadlet that just morphed from a tadpole a few days before stocking. The final location where the crew stocked tadpoles was back at Triangle Pass, where we collected the eggs to be raised in the hatchery. Horses were used to assist crew members with the heavy load of eager tadpoles heading to their new home. Pulling out our tadpoles here off the horses. We just packed in about five and a half miles. See, they're swimming around and healthy. We got about 2,000 that are going to go into the breeding pond here, and these guys did originate from Triangle Pass. Uh, one of the reasons we grabbed them is because we had a really long winter and about 20 feet of avalanche debris over the ponds here, and we were worried about uh, the natural recruitment because they have to metamorph in time before it freezes in the winter. Um, so we actually took some eggs out and were able to grow them much faster in the hatchery. So these tadpoles are probably within a week or two of metamorphing into toadlets. So we would expect to see higher survival than some of those natural ones, which we'll look at them, but they're probably a lot smaller. So take them for a walk. Crew members loaded up backpacks and carried the tadpoles the remainder of the way down to the ponds where the eggs were collected. From the hatchery where the tadpoles were raised to the ponds where they were stocked was over a five hour journey. Despite the long journey, not a single dead tadpole was found while releasing them into the ponds. Upon arrival at the ponds, bags of tadpoles were placed in the water so that the temperature of the water in the bags would match the temperature of the water in the ponds. The tadpoles were poured out of the bags into the ponds. Here, 
A district wildlife officer, a member of the toad crew, and a volunteer point out the differences in size between hatchery-raised tadpoles and the wild tadpoles. The hatchery-raised tadpoles were much larger, and they will likely metamorph into toadlets long before their wild brothers and sisters, which may give them a better shot at finding good habitat for surviving the winter. The Southwest Native Aquatic Species crew hopes to continue efforts to recover these high alpine toads. The crew is currently working on getting the public involved in conservation efforts, so keep your eyes open for some of these opportunities in the future. If you think you have found a boreal toad, please contact your local Colorado Parks and Wildlife office and let them know. Thank you for watching and hopefully you walked away with a greater understanding and new appreciation of boreal toads and the process of attempting to conserve them.